Uh, I just want to greet you all in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. Um, today is the 26th of July. It's just after 7 o'clock in the evening, on Sunday evening, and I've uh, decided to finally record this uh, video that I've been wanting to do for some time with regards to the calendars. I'm not sure what I'm going to title this, but I want to talk to you guys today about is the calendars. Um, most of you know me and know that I've been you know, working on these calendars for quite some time. Um, it actually goes back even further than the time that I've been with Ministry Revealed. It was one of the first things that uh, about four years ago, five years ago, that uh, Yahweh really led me to try and get a clear understanding on is that the biblical calendar uh, is not the same as the Gregorian calendar. And most of you already have a clear understanding of that and a clear appreciation of that, that uh, the Gregorian calendar is no resemblance at all to the way God counts his days. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's, this is not something that's been uh, new to me. It's been something that I've been working on for quite some time. But more recently, I've uh, been working on it a lot more. There was a time when I put it aside that as we were working on the dates and trying to get an understanding of when the Lord Jesus was going to come and fetch us as his bride, we spent more and more time trying to understand the calendars and the differences between the calendars and to try and f just figure out which one is the correct calendar. And um, yeah, that's been a, a quite a headache to say, to say the least. Uh, I think we've been to and fro on a number. Well, I, let me speak for myself. I've been to and fro, to and fro on a number of different calendars, and uh, it's been. I'm going to just in this video, um, just take you through, maybe in the beginning stages, just some of the learning curve that I've been through, some of what we've been through, maybe just touch on some of the the different calendars that are out there, um, and uh, and then get into what where I believe we're we are now and we, and I believe that we are now on a much clearer understanding and, and, and I, I do believe that this calendar that I'm going to present to you today is in line with what God, with the way God counts his days. Now this whole subject is a very emotive uh, subject. Uh, it brings about a lot of emotion. Um, there is there is some degree of pride in, in many people that present these calendars. I've I've listened to a number of people, and I'm not going to mention any names, but there is a clear element of pride that drifts through these various variations of the calendar. And, and I just want to um, pray that the Lord helps me just to set all those things aside and just to give you a, an unbiased, open, and honest view um, of what I understand is the current situation with regards to the calendars. And what I've discovered, I just want to share with you guys and maybe just explain to you um, you know, the calendar that I put together. I have shared it on the forum and I've made it available to a number of people. But I don't think there's, I, I think it, a lot of people are, you know, may, be, may still be a little bit at a loss as to what we're really saying uh, is the difference between the calendars. Um, I just want to touch a little bit on the subject as to why. And, and maybe um, before I get on to the subject of why, we, we you know, calendars are, are related to the date that we, we're trying to, that we've been trying to figure out with regards to the escape uh, and, and the escape of the bride in particular. Uh, and, late, and of course, we're trying to understand the end days and the rollout of the end days. And I think Alan has, has done a great job in helping us and, and the Holy Spirit has revealed through him uh, the understanding of who the Gospels are speaking to, the understanding of the 14 years uh, for the last day's uh, tribulation. And we are just trying to understand exactly the timing. When does this all start? And I don't personally, and yes, we've set a couple of dates, and I've been personally involved in, in that to a large extent. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I, I understand there is the disappointment when a date comes and goes, and we don't, and we have to try and figure out what went wrong. Uh, but I think it's part of any, any it's, it's really a love issue. You know, when, you, when you're eagerly awaiting the arrival of your bridegroom or and you're awaiting the arrival of your king and your lord um, inevitably we we have to be looking at when and and where are we with regards to the prophecies and when we start looking at time well then i'm afraid calendars become part of the equation uh, and so some people get upset about it and get upset about setting dates and that and 
and, and I understand we've because we've missed so many dates, we're also toning that down a little bit and maybe being a little bit more cautious about setting an absolute specific date, but we, we look rather saying, yeah, in this we're in we know that we're in the season and we're looking at possibly here or possibly there and give and speaking a little bit on broader terms than than in, on such uh, specifics which uh, which I too have done and uh, I, I'm a, you know I apologize for any errors or any confusion that I might have caused in the past but I on the other hand I think it's been part of uh, this whole thing has been part of our learning curve the, the the search for the date of the coming of our Lord Jesus has led us to delve into a clearer understanding of so many things a clearer understanding of when um, God's feasts are and and how we are supposed to count uh, to when his feasts are in particular the feast of weeks of new grain which which was which, which is really shrouded in mystery and and we try to understand when exactly that was and when the feast of first fruits and that's also shrouded in mystery and there's so many things and so many ideas and everybody has got a different idea on these things so this this video is not about knocking anybody it's not about criticizing anybody's understanding um, I'm, I'm going to show you a couple of calendars and I'm not saying they're wrong I'm, s I'm just going to say that I disagree with them and why I disagree with them and I'm not going to get into any detail uh, on that particular issue um, I might point you to some places where you can find some additional uh, read information to read up on it and where you can go and study it and and to make your own come to your own conclusion as to which calendar you believe is the correct calendar um, so I think you know I think that's pretty much come to the end of my introductory uh, process this is this is about the, the understanding of the calendar what I just want to conclude is it's a love issue okay it is kind of like uh, understanding what this world really looks like. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole debate about the globe earth and the flat earth. And, and uh, uh, for me, it's a love issue. Um, it's, it's like the, his name, you know, understanding his name and the correct pronounce, way to pronounce his name. That's another area that's also been uh, shrouded in mystery and lost in time. And to a large extent, our enemy has done, uh, the, uh, Satan has done a, 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 a work to... Uh, to, to hide certain things away from us, to hide the truth from us in terms of his name, in terms of his, uh, in terms of his true calendar, in terms of how this world really looks. And uh, it's up to us uh, as, a, as, as a gesture of love to go and seek out a matter and to, and to understand from his scriptures and to understand what uh, to seek out the truth and that's really what we're trying to do here that's what everybody is trying to do all these guys that i'm going to mention here in this video with regards to calendars are all doing exactly the same thing we're all brothers uh, uh seeking out the truth trying to understand and, and uh, come up with different understandings and different angles on the on the subject and and that's what i'm going to present here so from the bottom of my heart i'm, I'm doing this with love this is not an exercise of criticism against anybody. Uh, please, I, I just want to stress that um, to the utmost. I may be completely, what I'm going to show you here tonight may be completely wrong. I, I believe it is correct, but I'm going to leave it for you guys uh, to, to decide w whether it's the truth, whether it's correct or not. Um, so without any further ado, let me get on to the calendars. All right, so um, I'm going to start off with just going through. Uh, let's have a look. We, we, this is the calendar we're most familiar with, the Hebrew calendar. Um, Alan refers to it quite a lot in his videos, and we most, we refer to it quite quite a lot. And uh, we understand that the Hebrew calendar is uh, based is a lunar solar calendar. It does uh, start its months on the dark moon, and uh, so that the full moon is in the middle of the month, which I happen to agree with absolutely. Um, the, 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 they start their first day of the week uh, on the first visible crescent. Okay, that's, that's something that's peculiar about this particular calendar, uh, which I don't think is correct, and I'll get into a bit more detail about that. So this is the one calendar that we're quite familiar with, and, and, and there's a number of things. I'm going to get into a lot more detail on that later on. So I'm just mentioning that is the Hebrew calendar, which is also presented in a different format 
on this site, uh, the uh, cgsf.org site. It's the same calendar, they just present it differently, and I actually prefer to use this version. I just find it easier uh, to use than this. Uh, I find this site a little bit clumsy and, and a bit difficult to work through. So I usually refer to this one. When I, when I'm with it, whenever I'm dealing with the Hebrew calendar, this is, the, this is my go-to site uh, for the Hebrew calendar. But it, essentially, it's the same days. Uh, it's the same calendar. All right. Um, the next color I want to have a look at that's come to our attention quite a lot in, in the last couple of days and, and in particular in the, maybe the last couple of weeks, I should say, and that's the Enoch calendar. It's also known as the, uh, the Zadok priest calendar, um, and uh, others might know it as the Essene uh, calendar. They're all pretty much the re based on the Enoch uh, count of days as described in the book of Enoch. Um, I've shown this particular site because Nick F uh, von der Leyen is, is a particular strong advocate of this particular calendar and he's done a tremendous amount of work on it. And uh, I would, if, you, if you want to read up on, uh, on his explanation, this is a great site to go to. Um, he's got a lot of videos on it and he's uh, very passionate about the work that he does as well. Uh, there's a few other people that are also working on this calendar. There's uh, there's uh, there's at least two other groups that he often refers to. Uh, that uh, that Nick refers to, and he, uh, they are slight variations of this uh, Enoch uh, this Enoch uh, calendar. The variations are really based on when the actual year starts. Uh, there there are some that believe the year must start on the equinox, the 20th of March, usually, in a year. And, and then others believe that um, it must start close to there, but must be, of course, the, the calendar is based on a fourth day start, uh, the fourth day of the week. And, it's, and it so it takes the Enoch start described in his, in his, in his book. And, uh, uh, and then, of course, they link the creation week to it. So we know that the moon and the sun were created on the fourth day. So that's hence the day one on their calendar is the fourth day which we call a Wednesday, but let's just stick to the numbers of the days, uh, the fourth day of the week. And in this particular calendar, they work on a 364 days, which is a perfectly divisible by seven. So what that means is that when the year goes through and comes back again, uh, the first day of the new year will be on the fourth day again. Uh, there is, of course, this, uh, the truth of the, well, the reality of the matter is that the sun takes 365 and a quarter days to do a full cycle. So there is a day and a quarter to deal with, uh, regardless of what Enoch has to say. And perhaps it was 364 days perfectly in his day, but because he lived before the flood, I suspect that something happened during the flood uh, and there was a change in the days, or, um, uh, well, whatever the reason is, but the, the fact is, and it's a measurable fact, there are 365 and a quarter days in the solar cycle. So you've got to deal with this extra day. And this is the other difference in these, in amongst the, 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 uh, the, the guys that advocate the uh, Enoch calendar, besides this, the when is the correct day to start, the other thing is how do you deal with this extra day? There's one group that just ignore it and they, they go 60, 364 days uh, year after year, which results in a drift. Uh, you, lose, you lose a day you drift further and further away from the equinox each year around. Uh, um, Nick goes into a bit of detail on that uh, on one of these videos. I think it was this video here. Uh, he, he, he covers the markers of the lunars on this one, and I'll talk about that now. Um, and I think it was in this calendar that he also he speaks about the, the guys that do not take into consideration this, the the 65th day. So what Nick advocates to do with that extra day is you just live it. It's not a weekday, it's not a day, it's just there. The sun comes and goes, you just live it, and you'd start again your count of 364 on the day after that. So it's a day that, for whatever reason, some link it to the day that's cursed. Uh, the, in other words, Job's uh, birthday, and there's a whole lot of ideas in that regard. I can't say it's true or untrue, but the reality is 
there's differences in how to deal with it. There's another group that advocates that you you go uh, you go three 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 years of 364 days, then you add an extra week, so that way you keep your start of the year on the same on the fourth day. You add a, uh, the seven day week, and then uh, and then you start. Uh, you go back to so so one year you'll have uh, three three hundred and uh, what is that? 71. So it's 364 plus the seven days. So 371 days, uh, and then you, you'll go back to the 364, and then you'll you'll start eating back, e drifting back again to towards the equinox for for the start. And it's kind of the same principle that's used uh, to correct in the Hebrew calendar, and we'll get into that a little bit. The Hebrew calendar also does a similar correction because there's a difference in days in the lunar lunar cycle. Uh, of 364, uh, sorry, 354 days versus the the solar cycle of 365 and a quarter. So there's a 10, there's 11 day and a bit different difference between the two cycles, and that needs to be corrected for. And the, so the Hebrew calendar has a similar uh, 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 way of fixing that problem, and by having a, a 13th month every uh, third or so year. So you you then go ahead and then you fall back 10 days and the next month, the next year you fall another 10 days and then you jump 30, 30 ahead again and we'll get into that a little bit later. But so this this other group advocates that it, it works on a similar basis, but they do it a week, uh, one week added onto the 364 and then they go back to a 364 day year for about three or four years and then and then they add another week again. So they always keep the start of the year as close as possible to the equinox, the, the spring equinox, the March equinox, around the 20th of March. So they, that was the, the idea. So the, th the other th thing that ha this calendar uh, that I have a problem with is uh, that one is the, the, the issue of when do we start. Oh, uh, the other thing, w w what I find very strange is that Enoch described, clearly described the moon cycle as well uh, in, in, in the book. And for some other reason, the, the, the guys that advocate this particular calendar ignore that, and Enoch clearly said that the month starts when the when the when the moon is in conjunction with the sun. In other words, on the dark moon. Uh, and he described he clearly said. I mean, I, I, I've I've gone into a great amount of detail in my previous video on this, where I where I explained uh, what I believe to be the correct interpretation of how Enoch describes the movement of the the luminaries, the sun and the moon. And you can see clearly there that he he marks the beginning of the month as the 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 day when the sun and the moon are in conjunction. So um, so the, and that and and Nick and, and the and, and all the guys have, have ignored that. Uh, they they have lunar markers, and Nick uh, goes into detail about these lunar markers and. And there's a great d uh, debate in this particular Enoch fraternity about the handling of these mar markers. Now, these markers are, the, in other words, when when the full moon is supposed to occur in what month and when the dark moon is supposed to occur in what month has apparently been recorded in some of the uh, Qumran scrolls. And I'd, I have never gone into detail of that. But the reality is that their full moon is not necessarily in the middle of the month. Their full moon could be anywhere. It, could, it changes, just like the Gregorian calendar changes. The, the full moon can be any. It, it drifts through the various months. So there's no ensuring in this particular calendar that the full moon is in the middle of the month, which I believe is incorrect. And I will go into that a little bit da later on as well. Hopefully, um, there'll be I'll be able to add some clarity on that particular issue. I, I think it's vitally important that the that we, uh, and, it's re and it's related to the birth of Jesus, for one, um, and we'll get into that now. But the full moon, in my understanding, must be in the middle of the month. And that is why the month must start um, on the dark moon, uh, so that the m full moon can be in the middle of the month. But on this Enoch calendar, that's not the case at all. So the, th the, 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 and the last issue that I have with this particular calendar is they never have a 13th week, uh, at least a 13th month. There's never a 13th month in their calendar. It's always 12. Now, it's clearly, there is, a, is evidence in the scriptures 
that there was a 13th month. Um, there must have been a 13th month. And I'm going to, maybe I must just get into that now. The, the, one of the other calendars that, I, that I've been looking at is the world lo world's last chance. The, these guys um, advocate a calendar that's very similar to the Hebrew calendar with a very subtle difference. Um, the, they, they also uh, start the, uh, they start the, let me just, the, this is their app, this is, you have to, they start the, the, um, the month on the dark moon, uh, and um, let's just jump to 2020. So they, they, okay, so they've developed this app that you can download. It's not a very easy app to use. I, I find it quite uh, user unfriendly, and you can switch it between the Gregorian view and the Hebrew view, but it's it's not easy to use. But you can see where they've marked uh, the. So, for example, this would be. Um, you got to look for the Passover. Yes, Passover here. So the beginning of their year would be this this day here, the 25th. So th that's New Moon Day, and then you count. Then there's six days, and then there's a Sabbath, and then six days, and then the Sabbath, and then six days and the Sabbath, and six days and the Sabbath, and six days and the Sabbath. So that's how it works. And then these light blue ones are obviously the feast days. That's the that's the f uh, that's Passover there. That's your seven days of unleavened bread. And so on. So that's uh, th that's how they've got there. So they they usually start there. So the 25th of March in this 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 year 2020 was the same day that the um, Hebrew calendar started. In fact, I think the Hebrew calendar started on the 26th of March. And the reason why the, uh, let's just have a look at that. Let's just go there. Um, just double check that um, Hebrew calendar for uh, 2020. Let's just expand that. Uh, so it's Nissan, uh, uh, Nissan 1. Yeah, you see, they start, the Hebrew calendar started on the 26th of March. Um, but uh, the the world's last chance, guys, they started this year on the 25th. And the reason for this difference is because the guys at world's last chance, they believe that... Um, you must st your first uh, your your new moon day is the day of the conjunction, and or, or, the, or so sorry, the first in other words the first day after the dawn. I think they put it in this terms, the do, uh, dawn after the conjunction of the moon and the sun. So if I had to go to Stellarium and just uh, see if I can uh, let me go to uh, March. They've got it as 25. Alright, so there's the moon there. So if you go one day forward, one day... There's the conjunction. So that's where the moon and the sun are setting together. So the dawn are, would be uh, when, when the sun rises here. And that's... So this is what they're looking for. And they believe strictly that um, so the dawn there this day when is now new moon day so that's the 25th that's why they've got their calendar starting on the first day of the month being new moon day and then the next day would be the working day, first working day which would be the 26th whereas the hebrew calendar they they looking for they're looking for the conjunction. Uh, sorry, they're looking for the first. Uh, they're looking for evidence of that first crescent. So, so they would look here. They would see in the evening on the 21st. They would the, the sun would set. Let me just go back. So the sun would set, and they would say they would be looking for that first crescent, and then they would call that day one. Uh, and they ignore. New Moon Days, so they don't. There's no New Moon Days in the current Hebrew calendar, so they don't, they. This would be day one. This would be the first working day of the week, and uh, so they. So they would. So that's why now. Well, 
when they see this, the next day would be day one. Okay, so when they see the crescent, the evening on the, as the sun sets, and they see the crescent, uh, crescent moon, they would say, right, the next day would be would be day one, and that's why they've got the 26. You see, here comes then the sun rises, so they already saw the crescent the evening before, and this is now their day one. That's why they got the beginning of the of the month as the 26, and uh, so that so that explains. The difference between the the world's last chance uh, first day of the month versus the Hebrew uh, calendar's first day of the month. Now, I happen to agree with the world's last chance method that it, uh, and it's also the method that that Enoch described uh, as in his book. He said, when you see when you see this situation that the that the, when you've got the crescent or that oh, I keep on saying crescent when you've got the conjunction of the sun and the moon together uh, setting, when you've got the sun and moon together setting, in other words the sun and moon conjunction at sunset, the next day is the first day of the month which is new moon day. So, th and that's, so that's in line with what the uh, World's Last Chance uh, guys do and it's in line with Enoch and I 100% agree th that is the correct way to determine the beginning or the first day of the month. So you will see that there will be these differences in the in the Hebrew calendar. Uh, let's just go back to the Hebrew calendar. So there will be these differences in the start day from month to month. But other than that, the world's last chance and the Hebrew calendar, the other rule that they're looking to apply to. And I just want to get to ahead of myself. Uh, they let's do, we'll get to the the rules that the, uh, that now, but. We, you'll remember there was this thirteenth day, thirteenth uh, month issue, that both the Hebrew calendar have an extra month added into their calendar. This year there wasn't one, but the previous year, I think 2019, if I remember correctly, they added an extra month. The Hebrew calendar. Um, they had. Yeah, there you can see there's Adar and there's the thirteenth, there's the thirteenth month. That was in 2019, and uh, so they they have the, they have these extra months, that, and these, this 13th month is to correct for that 10 day or 11 day difference between the solar so cycle and the lunar cycle. Uh, the problem is when do you insert these 13th days, and we'll talk about that later. But getting back to where I where I where I started off. Um, the Enoch calendar, they never have the 13th day, and the, as I was saying, there's evidence that there, there is a 13th, uh, sorry, 13th, they ne Enoch never has a 13th month, but there's evidence that there must have been a 13th month, and that's in this uh, story of Ezekiel, uh, in, the, in the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapters 1 uh, to, to 4, it's the story of when Ezekiel was told to to lie on his side for 40 days, or, th or first to lie on his side for 390 days, and then lie on his side for 40 days. And when you read, I'm not going to get into great detail of this, but uh, so you'll be able to go to this uh, s this site. I'll put the links in there, but you can you'll be able to go to this site and read it up for yourself. And yeah, they clearly demonstrate that the only way that this could have happened, what was described in these chapters, the only way that it could happen was if there was a 13th month. Uh, they go into detail of showing the various types of years uh, between the the uh, the Gregorian, the original calendar, the Gregorian calendar, the 12-month lunar calendar, and any all the other examples. But this, the only one that matches this story in the scriptures is if it were happened in a year where there was 13 months in the year. And uh, so, I'm clear, based on this, there's clear evidence for, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as these guys are concerned as well, that there, are, that there is a 13th month from time to time, but the Enoch calendar never has a 13th month in their, in their year. They, they, they don't, no, no. So, there's, there's a, there's, 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 so I've highlighted some of the problems. I'm not saying these guys are wrong. I'm just saying that these guys, there are a few problems that they cannot answer to with this calendar of these. 
uh, with regard, and we'll touch on the full moon being in the middle of the month, the importance of that with regards to Jesus' birthday. Perhaps we should just do that right now, um, seeing as I'm on that subject. Let's just deal with that. We know from Stellarium, and Alan has gone into a great amount of detail on this, uh, exp showing that we know when the Bethlehem star uh, actually occurred. And uh, I'm not going to go into that detail, but we know that uh, on in on June on the Gregorian calendar on June the 17th in 2 BC, we had a conjunction here uh, between Jupiter and Venus, and that that was in fact the the true Bethlehem star. We also know that that was at a time of a full moon, so. Um, we know, thirdly, that when we go, that this was the 15th day of the third month. And we know that from, from this, uh, uh, well, we can, because we can count backwards, we can count from here, we can go back to what we know to be the rules for the beginning of the year. And I'm not going to do that. I've, we've done that in previous videos, and Alan's covered it, where you go backwards and you count back from from this birthday and you can and you will, you will just you will see that the Jesus birthday occurred in the middle of the third month so um, and when we go to the Hebrew calendar uh, on, on that on that particular year if we go to this uh, just use this vision and I go and I enter in a uh, negative one because they again this this site also counts year zero as the is 1 BC, so negative 1 would be 2 BC there, they've got a 2 BC there, and we, if we go to uh, June June the 17th that we get from Stellarium, uh, June the 17th, we can see that that is the 15th day of the third month. So we know that we've, we've found that link and we've established that that was the day of Jesus' birthday, the 15th day of the third month. So the question that you may ask, and it's a question I ask myself, well, how do we know that this Hebrew calendar is correctly aligned with the Gregorian calendar? We, we, we made the statement that this year, 2020, that the Hebrew calendar is started their year one month too early. Well, and we've shown that in the stars, and Alan's gone into great detail on that, and I'm 100% in agreement on that, and I'm going to get into why we believe that also. I'm going to show, to, I believe that they are consistently, in fact, currently, that the Hebrew calendar currently is consistently one month too early, not just this year. And that's what the main purpose of this whole video is, is to explain those that, and I'm going to get into the rules of determining when is the first day of the month, of the year? We, how, how do we know which month is the first month of the year? So we're going to get it, and, and then I'm going to show you, once I've done that, you will see that in 2 BC, because of the Hebrew, the way they determine their, their, their first month of the year, because of their rules, they inadvertently, in this particular year, their rules actually match the true rule uh, for determining the beginning of the year. And it's all to do with the equinox. The equinox, they, uh, and I'll get into the rules now, but they, th I don't want to get ahead of myself here. I just wanted to show you that we know that the full moon must be in the middle of the month because we know that Jesus was born on the June the 17th, and we know that that was matches to the 15th day of the third month in this in this match. And I'm going to, uh, for now, if you can just accept that this is correctly aligned, that the Hebrew calendar for this year is correctly aligned to the Gregorian calendar, uh, but not not anymore. And I'll and I'll tell you the reason why. But we so we know that the full moon must be in the middle of the month. And it must be consistently in the middle, middle of the month. Uh, because you must consistently apply the rules. And so the Enoch calendar doesn't do that at all. So I, I, I've, I, I'm going to move off this. I'm, I'm quite happy. 
Uh, there's one other thing. Sorry, there is a there's a, some of our brothers and sisters even in our in our, in our ministry that are advocating the Enoch calendar and and have put together a, a, a very uh, in detailed uh, analysis of the scriptures lining up and and I'm going to get a, into uh, <laughs> maybe I was going to get into trouble now. <sighs> um, I, I just want to stress this is not a criticism against anybody. I just want to point out to you guys, in my, and in my last video, um, I covered this as well. The Enoch's uh, solar day count, the solar, the day count for the solar cycle, is not in sync with his day count for the lunar cycle. Uh, and I went into great detail, and I showed that there's at least a five-day, but probably, a, a, and in my mind, definitely a 35-day difference between the start of the day count on the solar cycle and the start of the day count on the lunar cycle. So uh, that is not built into into um, into the calendar that um, some of our brothers and sisters are working on at the moment. And I did point that out in my last video, but I don't think, uh, I watched their last uh, uh, video and they, they haven't adjusted accordingly. And so I just want to, now that we've moved past the 21st and the 23rd of July, it might be time to just go back and have a look at that particular aspect, and and there might be something in there that in the, in that 35 days. And I will, t at the end of this video, I will get into a little bit more detail on that particular aspect, and and I'm going to try and avoid stepping on on toes because uh, that's not my intention at all. I just want to, you know, I'm just seeking the truth, and and I think you guys are onto something there, but I think you're out of alignment with regards to your. The your 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 calendar alignment your your month days and your solar days are out of alignment by 35 days so anyway so moving i'm going to move off the enoch calendar for now i will address that other matter later on at the end of the video um, okay the next one i want to have a look at is the, the that we've also referred to we actually jumped to this calendar at one point in time it's called the creator's calendar or this is Miguel Shabbat and his team that put together this. And they, they advocate that the beginning of the month starts at the full moon. And they, th I, I admittedly, I've moved between the calendar that starts on the dark moon and the calendar that starts on the full moon. There was a time that, that I advocated that this must be true. And uh, I went back to the to the uh, I moved away from this again, and then very recently, when we ran into some trouble on uh, on our on a date that we thought was supposed to be for the escape, and then it never happened, uh, this became a an, an obvious solution. And maybe a, a two, we were perhaps a little hasty, and uh, maybe I should re uh, perhaps I was a little hasty in in suggesting that it was a solution to our problem, and. Uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, that was a mistake because I should have known better. Th I've clearly come to the conclusion and I will never go back on this understanding that the, the moon does not, uh, the month does not start on the full moon. I'm not going to get into detail on this particular aspect in this video. But uh, what I will say is if you want to go and read it up for yourself, and this is a, this is a study that I've shared with several people in the forum, and it's a study that I've, that I believe is totally uh, correct, um, and that's available on these guys. This this is the creationcalendar.com. Okay, so they the, this team of guys they don't have a calendar they put out themselves, but they do have a lot of study with regards to the calendars, and they've got a list here um, of of studies that you can go and work through with regards to the calendars and all the nuances and that. And it's a really great site. But they too advocate that the dark moon is the beginning of the month, and they advocate they they've explained this in great detail. In this particular study here, is the new moon the full moon? Um, if you click on this, it's a PDF or a Word document download, and you can go read that. Um, they've they, they've got other studies here as well, which, which are really great. But this one in particular, if you've got any questions with regards to how do we know that the dark moon is in fact the beginning of the month besides the fact that Enoch himself also said so besides the fact that there are many scriptures that point to that 
uh, and, and many other historians that have recorded that. We've got Josephus, uh, Philotheus, we've got uh, uh, tons of uh, hi historic documents that advocate that the dark moon is the beginning of the month. All of them support this particular aspect. Is uh, so. It's only. It's in fact, uh, to my knowledge, it's only this group of Mikhail uh, Shabbat and his group that advocate that the month starts on the full moon. So I'm not going to spend any more time on this. We've moved away from this, and uh, I'm. This is a case of beyond reasonable doubt. I. This is no longer the case. Uh, you know, there's two types of ways of measuring up a matter. The one is on the balance of probabilities, and the other one is uh, you get to the point where there's no doubt anymore, uh, beyond reasonable doubt. And I've got to the point where there's no doubt in my mind anymore uh, that this full moon is not the, the, f the full moon is not the beginning of the month. I have no doubt about it. The, on the balance of probabilities with regards to the beginning of the year, when the where how we are to determine which month is the start, uh, which full which which dark moon is big starts the year, that I will still put in the category of on the balance of probabilities. And, and what that means is when you look at the evidence presented to you for one case versus the evidence for another case, uh, and you weigh the balance of which is the most likely scenario to be cor the correct one, that I would call the, on the balance of probabilities, I believe what I'm going to show you today. Uh, when how the correct way to determine which dark moon marks the beginning of the year. So I, I'm going to move. So I'm moving off these guys. Or I just wanted to show you we we were here. We've moved off it, um, and we, uh, th that's the only aspect. The other aspects of how they the the counting of the you know the, the where the Sabbaths lie on the eighth, the fifteenth, twentieth. All of that I agree with. There's most of the other things I don't agree with their feast days. They give a list of feast days here. Yeah, they've got a whole new, uh, uh, I don't want to digress too much on this, but I'd, I, I, must, I just want to point out, I don't agree with their new revised dates uh, for the various feast days. I, I don't agree with them at all. Uh, they've got them in different months, different places altogether. You can go read up if you want to, and um, so I'm going to move off that. Okay, so... Uh, after the, so I want to now get into the world's last chance again, and um, and the Hebrew calendar because they are very very closely related to each other. Um, so this is their app, and I'm not going to use it too much um, because it's very difficult to read this 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 calendar. Um, but I'm going to go and talk about how they. Um, the calendar is similar to the Hebrew. We, I've mentioned the first uh, similarity was, well, that, that they begin on the dark moon, except that where the, and I've mentioned the Hebrew uh, looks for the first crescent. Uh, for the for the they look for the first crescent and the um, world's last chance. They look for the dawn after the after the conjunction of the moon and the sun, which is in line with Enoch. So that's the d one difference. The, the thing that they are having common to a large degree is that they both look to have to that the Passover must be as close as possible to the equinox. So we know that the equinox occurs on the 20th of March, sometimes the 21st of March. Okay, so the equinox occurs there. And they would be seeking to have the uh, Passover that day after the equinox, as, but as close as possible to the equinox. And the re so now th the reason why it must be after, and I have, and I agree that it must be after, is that you want to avoid the situation of having two Passovers in the same year. So, in other words, if, if for s by some chance the, the Passover ends up being held before the equinox, then you would uh, you'd be holding two Passovers in the same cycle of the sun. And we know that the scriptures say that the Israelites had to come together three times a year, at Passover, at the Feast of Weeks, and at Tabernacles. Not four times a year, and not two times a year. 
So if you have a situation where Passover occurs before the equinox, then you'll have one year where they will come to, together as a holy convocation, well, come together as a, a solemn assembly um, four times in that particular year. And then the next year, they will only be getting together twice. So, and you can't have that situation. So the only way to avoid that situation is to make sure that Passover happens after the equinox, the spring equinox. And it's the spring equinox from a northern hemisphere point of view. So I'm in agreement with that, uh, that it must be after. But I, and I'm getting to this rule that they, that, they've, uh, that they, together with the world's last chance, believe that the Passover must be as close as possible to the equinox, I believe, is, in, in, uh, is, is incorrect. Um, I believe there's a different target point, and uh, I'm going to get into that uh, later. And that, uh, having said that, this particular rule of looking to get Passover as close as possible to the equinox, but after, is applied strictly by the guys at World's Last Chance. But it is less strictly applied by the Hebrew calendar. Um, so I'm going to move into that area of the subject. I, what, I've, what I've done to try and get a handle on, on, on these, these two calendars as well is I've put together a spreadsheet where I can calculate their, and match their calendar exactly. Um, so I've called it the world last, world's last chance stroke Hebrew lunar solar calendar. And um, so what, uh, and I'm going to get, maybe I should just, um, it's something I wanted to do earlier in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the video, and I don't want to jump around too much, but I finally got to the point where I've got, I, uh, I've got a fully calculated uh, calendar. Uh, so in other words, I'm, I'm going to just, just a little bit of a side subject and I'm going to get back to this one now. When I started off this whole process recently about putting, and it, uh, let me put it this, when, it start, when we discovered that the Hebrew calendar this year started the year one month too early, uh, I soon realized that, well, hang on a second, well, maybe we need to get into this a little bit deeper. And I started putting a calendar together so that we could have a version that would show the, the Feast of Weeks, uh, will show the feasts exactly where, where they should be. So I put an Excel spreadsheet together, and this was, this was the, uh, the one of the first versions. This may not be the exact first, but was, this is one that I shared with, with most of the guys. I shared on the forum, and I shared it with a number of, of uh, friends and acquaintances of my own. And in this particular version, what we tried to do was we... Um, we said, okay, well, we know that, that they started a month too early, and we know, based on the sun, stars, and the moon, that they should have started in April, uh, not in March, this year. And uh, so I put this calendar together that could generate our own calendar with the feasts in the correct place. Uh, and it was rather a basic system where we had to, we had to in this version, I had to... Um, find on Stellarium the, the first day for each month. So we had to go and look for, by using the rules, uh, find the full moon in the middle of the month and then count back 15 days and determine which was the first day of the month. And then we would do that for each of the months and plug in a date that we would go and get to from Stellarium. So we do the exercise of Stellarium, see where is the, where's the full moon uh, and, uh, and where's the 15th day? So we find the 15th day, and we've covered that in previous videos. Um, in fact, this is, is, this is the 15th day, so I can just show you as an example. So for any, any 15th day situation, you have, um, uh, it's actually the other way around. This is, uh, this is where the sun is rising, but um, you will have the moon. Uh, 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 well, let me go. This is, you actually want the sun setting and the moon rising situation. Um, so this this marks the typical. This is marks the 15th day. As the sun ri sets, you've got the full moon rising that happens um, on the night before the 15th day. So this marks the night before the 15th day. And 
that's how then you can count once you've got this mark you can count back 15 days and you'll know which is the first day of the month so that's was what we were doing what I was doing here and um, and I put in these rules and how to do it and we had a couple of checks uh, so this this check is valid actually this check is invalid because uh, I should uh, I shouldn't have even had this check because the reality is you can have you've got two t two lengths of year you can have a year that's um, uh, th uh, 354 days which is 2 times 77 but you can have a year which is 384 days which has an extra month so in that case in those years these this check was n invalid but I only really realized that later on anyway so we had to go to Solarium and find the first day of every month and plug it in here and now because I knew the first day of every month I could then plot it out on the calendar and I could determine which months had uh, 30 days and which months had 29 days so as to ensure that the new moon day the the, well, the first day the new moon day was the first day on first on the line there so that was a relatively straightforward way of doing it and then all we're doing is we're matching up you know the the day count the biblical day count to a Gregorian date and, and uh, so there's no real calculation involved here there's no calculation involved in all in fact we are we are plugging in these dates and then I had a, 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 a brainwave whereby I could reduce this, and I'm, I haven't opened up that version, but I reduced this down to, I eliminated all of this, the need uh, to, to put in all these dates because I could calculate those dates uh, if I knew that date and that date. <laughs> in other words, the, the, the first day of the year that we get from Stellarium, uh, and, and even approximately, it didn't even have to be exact, and then the last day, uh, or the new first day of the next year, uh, then I could determine whether this this particular year was a 12-month year or a 13-month year, and I could determine the exact start. Uh, I did that by by doing a I, I, I used a calculation that's that that counts the cycle. So I, I, I took a standard a new moon day in 2000. And I knew that every Newman day would be exactly 29.53 and a couple of de uh, decimal places uh, days after that particular Newman day. So if you get plugged in any date close enough to that uh, uh, Newman day, I would be able to calculate the actual day. So that's why if I, in this particular thing, if I put in even, I think even if I put the 18th um, of uh, April, it would still calculate the 23rd day um, okay so it would still trying to to uh, it would still calculate the 23rd day so as long as I was within 14 days of the the actual new moon day uh, with this guesstimate from Stellarium I would be able to determine the exact date and then these these dates would be calculated for me and then the rest so all I had to do now is plug in two days so the original one I had to plug in all these dates and the second version I just had to plug in two dates and the rest could be calculated but there was a limitation to the accuracy of this and that is um, we're using our best guess as to when the uh, full moon day is uh, and up and that, that, that you'll see there's a, uh, this actually ended up being one day out this particular version on on the fully calculated version so from from this uh, then uh, we, uh, we we then uh, moved on to so that was the the, uh, the we had the first version the second version and then now we've got a fully calculated version um, and on this one uh, it now it looks similar but what's different here now is that I just have to plug in a year and the rest is fully calculated in terms of exactly for each and every day which what is the phase of the moon and and this came about thanks to the work um, of somebody else uh, and I just want to share that because it's uh, this is not um, this guy um, da uh, S Davies he's he's put a tremendous amount of work into putting um, creating macros um, in other words he create he programmed uh, macros and functions he added functions uh, to to uh, 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 Excel I by means of macros to calculate the moon phase uh, phases for each for a particular date he also in this is able to calculate the exact uh, position of the Sun or the moon 
and the planets and there's a whole lot of stuff here um, this is a free download from his site and he's put a tremendous, uh, a tremendous amount of work where you can plug in a particular <coughs> particular date and time and you can give your your location and he's he can you can calculate a whole lot of things so um, it was this was when I discovered this I realized that um, I could use his macros and I checked his the accuracy of his macros t against tellurium for the position of the sun and the moon uh, etc for a particular day and um, his calculations are spot on they 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 line up with tellurium uh, 99.999% in other words I think there's about there's maybe a, a, a few few degrees a, a one one less than a degree difference in position of any particular of any like for example the sun uh, is position um, you'll see that every if you click on the sun it gives you the position here okay the installerium it uses hours minutes and seconds um, that's because they they've taken this uh, 360 degrees and they've broken it up into 24 hours so uh, so the position is given in terms of hours um, but you can, you can, you can, uh, you can calculate. You can convert the hours, minutes, and seconds to degrees as well, and vice versa. So it's just a different method of expressing a position on 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 a on a circle. So in any case, um, so this guy D D um, Davis. Uh, put this spreadsheet together and these macros together and this was he was just using it to create a calendar for himself and on his calendar he's able to put different uh, things you can put a where the annual there's the annual eclipse of the 20th this is for the 12th uh, uh, this is I think you can change it here I'm not sure if you change it there uh, I think it is there let's see I don't want to change it now but um, you could change the year and then it would put a whole lot of information with regards to the sun moon and stars uh, pedigree and apogee is the distance the moon is from the earth and that plots it on the particular day we've got an equinox there they have got a solstice there on that day we got Saturn imaging I don't know there's a whole lot of stuff here uh, yeah we got Venus maximum elongation on that day so he plots all these different things there's a Jupiter opposition to the Sun uh, there's uh, Mars opposition to the Sun there's a uh, Venus maximum elongation and all these different things that he now plots on a on a calendar so this was really great and I thought well I could use his macros to do what I wanted to do in our calendar um, and that's what I've done so uh, I've, uh, well let me just go back there again so what I've done is, is, is uh, I've used some of his uh, work but, uh, well I'm using all of his macros and um, if you go look to the to the right of his calendar uh, of his calendar yeah you'll see this is where you get all the calculations are done here and um, so he does all the count he has the, the the position of the the Sun in in degrees uh, that's the, the uh, and uh, well it's uh, two parts okay you got the, you got the s uh, Sun in in where it is in in let me just go to Stellarium. So that's the s s position of the sun in terms of where it is on the circle and how far, in other words, how far it is from the equator. So from the equator, it's, it's 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees or minus 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees. And then you've got uh, zero would be, uh, would be here at the equinox. And then mm, let me just see where's the is zero. Yeah, so this equinox, yeah, there's equinox, that's zero hours or zero degrees, and then you've got the hours and the degrees. So that this would be the position of the sun in degrees from 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 that point there, and then you've got the position of the sun in degrees from the equator with zero being on the equator. So that's that's really uh, I don't want to confuse you guys, but that's really what he's doing there. Those are the two positions on this particular day. That's a Julian uh, uh, or it's a J2000 date. Uh, it's a bit of a technical term. So it's in other words, it's the number of days from the year 2000, from the 1st of January to the year 2000. That was an agreed peg point. So what these guys do is they do calculations 
uh, it's so much easier in mathematics to work with uh, whole numbers as opposed to working with a, d um, a year, day, uh, a year, month, day, hour, second situation. So they convert it into a serial, what's called a serial number, and then the, we do calculations of using the serial number, and then you convert it back to a meaningful date in terms of years, months, days, hours, seconds, etc. So you got the conversion backwards and forwards, and that's what you're really doing here. So on this list, there's uh, it's got one January, and when you convert that to a J2000 number, that's the, and then you do the calculations, and then you can convert that back to back again. So on this particular day, so in other words, 2012, first of January. 2012, because we've, uh, this particular uh, calculation is set for 2012 at the moment, uh, the sun was in that position in relation to the equator and that position in relation to the equinox. And that's calculated for each and every day going down. Each and every single day is calculated. And then the same happens for all of these other planets. He's got all the planets, the Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and none of those were really interested. I was interested in the moon, and he doesn't have the moon on yet. So I had to. So what I did was I took this as a starting off point, and um, and we've now on our calculate on our in our calculator you recognise it there. So I've just pulled it, and then I've added to that is the lunar stuff, all the moon. This is all the the moon related stuff. So we're calculating here now the exact position of the sun and the moon. Uh, Conjunction the moon, yeah, those two, those two there. There's the position of the moon. The same two numbers are, th so it's in other words the equivalent of that for the sun, and here's the equivalent of, of that for the, for the moon. Uh, is it? It's it's that one. It's actually that one and that one. Those two there. Okay, for the moon. So oh, sorry, that's Jupiter. It's this one. Oh, sorry, it's, it's that one, and that one. Those two are the equivalent of these two, where these two are for the sun's position and these two are for the moon's position on this day. On this, each, each one of these lines, each one of these rows is a particular day. So this is the 14th of March, 20, uh, 2020. That's the exact position in terms, terms of uh, uh, RA and, and in terms of uh, degrees. So that's the position of the moon, that's the position of the sun. And we're calculating that for each and every day uh, on the on the calendar going downwards. So, uh, so this this really enabled me now to do away with Stellarium altogether, because I didn't have to go back to Stellarium. I could now calculate exact position, and these are, so the, you had macros there to calculate the exact phase of of the moon. So we we've got these other calculators. There's the age of the moon, and then we've got. Um, these uh, the the exact uh, uh, so this is the age or the phase of the moon uh, w where it was and I, I found it very interesting uh, uh, thing when I when I used this phase so this this tells us exactly wh wh what what the age of the moon in other words at this on this day the 14th of March the moon was 19.56 days old so when it's uh, w when it's zero days old that's well that's obviously a new moon and when it's one day old well that's the first day of the week and two days and three days and four days and five days old and six days old and seven days old so he's created a macro that calculates the moon age and I've, it actually perfectly matches that is our days those are the days of the month so all i had to do was round off the uh, is rounded up or down to the closest whole number and and then I, f I discovered that we perfectly had our days of the month numbered based on the phase of the moon so or the age of the moon same thing so yeah we get to 29 days and then it goes back to um, point z point, uh, four nine. so that's a new moon situation again so we've got um, we we now know exactly where 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 we we now are numbering our days precisely to the phase of the moon, and that's exactly what I wanted. Um, so each one of these months are now numbered according to the days are numbered according to the exact phase of the moon, simply by rounding off to the closest day. And I've checked this against the calendars. 
Um, so, and this is where I, where I, where I diverted. I, I, mean, I did. I checked. I did, I've done exactly this setup for the Hebrew calendar as well. So, um, so that's what I uh, I was able now. So, if I go to the Hebrew calendar and I go to, I've just coloured it differently so th to distinguish between the two. But yeah, we're on the same year, and um, and I've set up the rules. Now I'll, I'll explain the rules to you now because the rules for be determining the first day of the, of the year are different um, between the, this calendar, the Hebrew calendar, or the Hebrew stroke uh, lo last uh, world's last child's calendar, and what I believe to be the correct calendar. You'll see that there is a different date for the beginning for the same year. It comes to the 24th of April versus the. Um, Hebrew calendar it comes to the 25th of March well this is now using the rules strictly it actually falls more perfectly in line with the world's last chance calendar uh, but you'll know you'll remember that the Hebrew calendar started on 26 and you I already explained that day difference the Hebrew calendar waits for the first crescent to be visible um, in the moon, in the age moon, so there they couldn't, they don't see the crescent on there. They, they, well, they saw it in the evening of that day, so then they call this day one. Whereas world's last chance, it's actually day two, the first day of the working week, but it's day two of the month. So, um, so now I've been able to calculate the exact uh, calendar for the world's last chance uh, stroke Hebrew calendar, barring these slight differences, but that's. That's an issue that I'm not going to adjust for because I don't believe that the Hebrew calendar is correct. I could make their adjustment, but I, I, I'm going to stick to I believe that the world's last chance uh, method of determining day one is correct, so I'm going to leave it at that. But the interesting thing is that uh, and this is where I'm getting back to. This is now a fully, fully calculated version of the calendar. And um, I'm now back at the point at which I diverted. I'm now able to show you that w their rule, where they try to keep the Passover, which is this pink line here, okay, they, their rule is they try to keep the Passover as close as possible to the equinox. Okay? And just remember this equinox is a calculated. I'm not inserting any of these things. Everything here is calculated uh, uh, based on, uh, for each year, it's, it's, it's calculated based on the position of the sun and the moon. And the phase of the moon. Everything is calculated based on that. Um, so it's position of the sun and the moon, and the phase of the moon, and uh, also where the position of this conjunction is. So, if if the rule is in their case, they're looking for a conjunction, or they're looking for the day when the sun and the moon are together. Okay, the conjunction. It's a, so it's a new moon situation, and they must be together to result in the pass over being as close as possible to the equinox and after the, it must be after the equinox so it must be close as possible but after and it and the day one is the, the when that conjunction so the this yellow line which is the the first day of the year could happen before the equinox so long as pass over 15 days later or 14 days later happens after the equinox so there are some years that and I, I, I don't know let's see if we can find a a year where that happens. Um, okay, here's a year. The, so 20 next year, that actually happens. You see now the beginning of the year is before the equinox, but Passover is still after the equinox, and, and, and they're quite happy with this situation. Okay, So that's their rule. So they're aiming to, to have that. If we go and look at another year, uh, 2019, um, Okay, so this is so yeah we see that they've started. They, th this is 2019, and we can go and check that. Um, it's, it's, I've calculated to 6 April. So if we go to the Hebrew calendar for that year, um, they said uh, sorry 2019. Just change that to 2019. And the Hebrew calendar they said one Nissan was 6 April. So my calculation is correct. 6 April was the beginning of the year. 
And yeah, we see it's after the equinox, but the question would have been could and look how far away the look how far away the, the, the Passover is. Um from but so the question is could they have started could they have started the year uh at the previous uh moon sun conjunction? And if they had, where would the Passover have been? So we can go back and see that they could have actually started it there um, on the 7th of March. Uh, but if they did that, Passover would have been here the day before the equinox. So their rule says, no, 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 you can't have that situation. So that a whole extra month, because of this situation, it cannot happen, Passover cannot happen on or before the equinox. So even if this 14th day here landed on the equinox, they would have added another month. And hence they start 6 April. So that, there are, there's, I think there's one, now this is, this rule that I'm describing to you now is applied by both World's Last Chance and the Hebrew. So they, 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 their years typically start the same. There are, there's there's are a few exceptions, and this is um, I think I think it was two, uh, 20, 2005 that was an exception to to this situation. Mm, no, it wasn't this. Uh, was it this? Or was it? Um, yeah, it was this one. Um, this one here, you'll see Passover they, uh, on. So using the rules that and and Wilson's Chance applies it strictly. They, their Passover is close to the equinox, but it's still after, and they were quite cool with that, and they started their year on the 11th of March. But on the Hebrew calendar, they weren't so cool about this. They decided, no, 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 they're not going to stick to that rule anymore. Um, they're going to go to, um, they're going to apply something different all of a sudden, and I, don't, I can't explain why, but they started, there's one Nissan, and they started on the 10th of April. So Will's Lost Chance were quite happy to start on the 11th of March, okay? But Hebrew calendar said, no, 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 they, they must wait another month. So they, they, they pushed it out. Uh, and I can't explain why. I don't know what rule they used to come to that conclusion because it's just the one, one or two exception, exceptions to the rule um, where they all of a sudden, other months, other years, they're quite happy to start the year before the equinox. And then this one, all of a sudden, they said, no, no, you can't start there. You must start here, April the 10th. They said, no, you must start down here. And so they were, in this particular year, they were not, the World Last Chance calendar and the Hebrew calendar were not in line with each other. Um, so that's uh, one anomaly that I, that I picked up that I can't explain why they've, why. I, I happen to think that, World's Law Science are more consistent with applying their rule than the Hebrew calendar in applying their rule. And I think this has got something to do with the 19-year cycle. And I just want to deal with that 19-year cycle thing. We know and, uh, 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 that the Hebrew, ca he the Hebrew calendar, they've got these, this rule that in, 19, in, the, in the cycle of 19 years, they've got a name for it, they, they, they will have seven years where they have an a 13th month. So seven years out of the 19, there's an extra month. And they they have the particular years in that cycle, and I, I haven't opened, I'm not going to go search for it now, but the, the is, there are sites that explain exactly which years, they've, or, or, or they've predetermined, in my understanding, exactly which years in that 19-year cycle um, they add the extra month. And I think this has got s something to do with it. Why they added in this year, they added it, the extra month in, um, you can see, well, in the World's Last Chance, they added an extra month uh, in 20, 2005, but in the Hebrew uh, calendar, they added the extra month in the, f the in 2006, if I recall correctly, so they added the extra month in the in a different year, um, and then it takes two years to then they come back in sync with each other again. So there'll be 
two years where they'll be out of sync with each other and the third year they'll be back in sync with each other again because of the difference between one applying the extra month in the one year and the other one applying the extra month in the in the following year. So, and it's to do with that cycle, whereas the world's last chance, I think, are, are doing as I do. I don't, I let the stars, uh, well, I let the sun and the moon and the stars decide or determine uh, which year must have the extra month. So I, uh, in this calculation, for world's last chance and in my calendar, which is, is similar but just a different uh, different rule applied to when we start the year, and I'm going to get into that more detail. I, I don't. I, well, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, I don't believe that that the equinox is the point at which we should be aiming at. Okay, and I will explain that just now. But when when I apply their rule consistently, and I let the uh, let the sun, moon, and stars determine which year should be a long year, and uh, which year should be a short year, then I believe we're much closer to what God really wanted us to do in the first place. He didn't want us to determine for ourselves when we should be adding that thirteenth month. He wanted us to read from the sun, moon, and stars when we should be adding in that thirteenth month. And you'll see that this 2006 is now a short year again. So a year can be either two sizes. Actually, it's in so th this is one of those leap year type situations. If I go to 2007, two you'll see it'll be 354. Um, so whenever you've got a leap year type s a scenario, uh, uh, you get that extra, extra day. Um, so there's just something to, to bear in mind. Um, so normally you have two lengths of years. You've got a 354 day uh, length year. So and then so it's very, so now it's close to 360 on the one end. But you've got the long year, which has got an extra month. The 13th month year will be a 384 day year. There's extra extra month, extra 30 days, or in some cases 29 days. So it so you've got two lengths. You've got a short year and a long year, and the one is either 354, 355. And the other one is either 383 or 384 years. Those are the two lengths. And the, the Hebrew calendar, they've got their specific years in their 19-year cycle when they add the extra month. And they stick to that rule. And I think that's why there's this been this difference in 2005. And then whereas World's Last Chance and our calendar lets the sun, moon, and stars determine when that extra month should be, should be added. And that's the difference between the two. Um, this is actually a very good example. I just happened to type in. Um, yeah, no, no, it's no, there's nothing. You'll see in this particular instance, they actually started the year just before the equinox. But so lo the rule is, so long as the full moon, uh, as long as the yeah, well, the full moon and the and Passover happens after the equinox, they're happy to start their year. Okay, so I, th I think I've pretty much uh, covered what I wanted to cover. Now I want to get into this this rule, the difference between where I think they're going wrong. And that is that they try to keep the Passover as close to the equinox. And I don't think that should be the case. I think it should be trying to keep the Passover in... Uh, when this, uh, the Passover must happen when the sun is in Aries. That's the rule, if I can explain that. So in other words, when, this, when the sun is in Aries at Passover, that's when we should start, or we should start our year so such that the sun is in Aries at Passover. Not that the sun is at the equinox. Okay, so we're looking for a, a Passover to when the sun is in in at the, in Aries, as opposed to uh, as close as possible. So a pass the Passover must be when um, when the, the the sun is in Aries at Passover. Not it's got nothing to do with equinox. We shouldn't be looking at equinox as our target. We should be looking at Aries as our as our target. And this all goes back to the original year, or the year that I'm, I'm calling my base year, 2 BC, the year that we know Jesus was, was born in. Um, 
and now you're going to see why the Hebrew calendar in that particular year was correctly aligned up. Um, but now they are consistently, in my view, a month too early because they're using the wrong rule. And what happened, what was happening in, in, uh, in 2 BC, let me just go through, I'm going to just go into Stellarium and just show you guys a little bit uh, from st a Stellarium point of view what I'm saying. So we know that the equinox is at, that's where the equinox is. And I'm just going to change it so that it's, uh, all right, so let's just take it that other way. It's just easier to read it this way, okay? So, um, so at, uh, at sunrise we've got, and I've left the, the 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 red line that you're seeing here is the um, um, eclipse, <laughs> not the eclipse, the <laughs> for the life of me now the name. It'll, it'll come back to me now. Okay, the blue line is the equator. The green line is the horizon. Okay, and I, I just want to maybe just say, I, I use this layout. It's it's quite different to what most people use, and I, I'll go into a lot of detail on this in my previous video. Okay, that's when you switch on your your um, your ground, and you'll start to recognize a little bit. Most people use it in this, but I, I explained in my previous video how the Stellarium is actually um, based on the flat earth model. I'm not going to go into that detail now, um, but um, I'm going to just uh, use the same layout that I was using in my previous video. So if you want to understand why I'm using this particular layout, then watch my previous video and you'll have a clear understanding of why I use this particular layout whenever I'm looking at the position or looking at, at Stellarium and d determining the position of the uh, of the sun and the moon in relation to our calendar. Okay, so uh, the uh, the blue line is our equator, and the red line, the word I was trying to look for, is the ecliptic. Okay, so that's the the circle that the sun apparently moves on. Okay, apparently moves on, and I, I'll go into a lot of detail in my previous. So, if I had to, for example, if I had to run this this thing, you'll see the sun moves on the blue line, but uh, it it apparently also I'm gonna I'm gonna just move it by days okay uh, and ho hopefully don't get too dizzy you'll see there the sun is moving now on the red line you'll see it's moving on the red line uh, although it's going okay what we've got here is the sun um, when I move it by a day the sun is doing a full circle coming back to the same position so you're not seeing the sun moving now okay um, so that's months let me just go back to where I was so if I move it by day it looks like the sun is moving backwards, but in actual fact, what's happening here is, is the stars are moving faster than the sun, so they're progressing forward, and the sun is staying on the same spot, but it's moving along that red line. Okay, that's the ecliptic. Okay, so when so we know when when the sun uh, when when the um, when the sun on that ecliptic when the when the ecliptic and the and the equator. Are uh, crossover that is the the equinox that's when the sun is on the equator that's the equinox okay so if you don't understand what I'm, what I'm referring to now then just watch my previous video and you'll have a much clearer understanding what I'm actually talking about here now I don't want to spend too much time on that so I'm just going to jump back to the equinox which we know is the the 20th of March okay so you'll see it the red with the red and blue that's on the equinox and sometimes it helps to just put it on the horizon as well it's easier to relate to but I'll, I'll leave it there so now have a look where the, e the equinox in relation to the stars is what I, need, what I want you to have a look at now. At, we are in 2020 at the moment, and we can see that it's in, in Pisces, okay? It's in the constellation Pisces. The equinox is in Pisces. So, um, and, and what, what happens is that this actually, this position changes. Now, what, coming back to the Hebrew calendar, and the world's last chance can are they looking for Passover uh, that happens as close as possible to when this situation happens, where the sun is on in the equinox. So what happens is that Passover actually happens because it's 15 days different. So you'll go. Let's go to the start of the month. They say they said the start of the month was 
was uh, in this particular year. They said it was the 25th or the 26th of March. So th there's, there's the beginning of the year, and if you go f uh, 15 days from there, uh, so that's the first, this one, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, should be full moon, okay, or well, the next day is full moon, okay, and you'll see this is Passover, but look where, where the sun is now, okay, it's now in, it's still in, it's still in, uh, in Pisces, eh? So the sun is still in Pisces. It started off in Pisces. It's still okay because Pisces is, a, is a, over at least 30 degrees. Each one of these hours is 15 degrees. Okay, so if you, in other words, if you take 360 degrees and you divide it by 24 uh, hours, you'll get 15 degrees per hour. So each of these move, each of these gaps is 15 degrees. So we know that the Pisces is over 15. Then the next uh, uh, portion is Aries. And then the next two is, is the next is Taurus, and so it goes on. And then you've got Gemini, uh, ca um, Cancer, Leo, v Virgo, etc. Each of them will cover 30 degree, and that's th about your 30 days. Okay, uh, so again, I'll cover that in much greater detail. What Enoch was explaining to us with regards to the movement of the sun across these windows uh, f over 30 days, each of the, you know, spending 30 days, 30 days, 30 days in each of these windows. Um, but you'll see now um, Passover on the Hebrew calendar. You'll see where the sun is, okay, in relation to Aries. So it's it's, and and this is where I believe it's it's wrong. We, this sun should be much closer to Aries because it's telling us a story. The sun is pointing us to the 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 the, the, the sacrificial lamb, the the ram that was that was sacrificed, and and I'm gonna cover this in a little bit more but now I'm gonna so you see the relationship it's it, the equinox is there in Pisces the Passover is uh, is, is here um, sort of between sort of on the border of the two but and and then and that is um, so that's full moon okay that's Passover but if we go and look at what happened in in the year that Jesus was born okay let's have a look what the picture looks like there and this is what I wanted to show you so we know that the year that he was born um, uh, well, let's just go there. Uh, the, that uh, the beginning. I think it was the fourth of April was the beginning of the year. Um, let's go and just let's just double check that. Uh, I think I've got it here. Uh, Two BC. Um, okay, his birthday was there, and the first day it was okay. It was five April. So five April was the first day in that but in, in the year that Jesus was born. Five April. Two, uh, 2 BC was the so if we go to 5 April 2 BC and and we look at so we, this is day one and um, we now need to go and look at we want to see the same picture so first of all okay let's go and have a let's go 15 days from here so it's uh, so that's where 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 that should be, f f that should be full moon. That's full moon. That's 15 day, and you see now, look at where, look at where the w remember that conjunction, th or that where the, where the blue line and the red line cross. That's that's where the equinox is. Re you'll remember it will last in 2020. Uh, 2020, it, the, the cross the crosses over, um, in in Pisces. Okay, it, p it crosses over in Pisces, but now it crosses over. Um, on the board, yeah, in Aries, Aries is is running, um, so that's that's Pisces, and Aries is is this section here, and the, the equinox was happening at the time when um, when so the equinox was 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 in 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 Aries in in the, in the year that that Jesus was born, um, and if we look at uh, Passover was happening when the sun was actually in Aries, because Aries, okay, Aries is is this section, yeah. So the sun was in Aries, as opposed to in the previous picture, the sun was uh, at Passover was somewhere over here, okay, it was somewhere on the on the border, it was somewhere there. So th that's and that's the th so th this is a uh, this is what's happened now over the two thousand years, is the the point at which the equinox occurs has shifted. From from there somewhere, okay, in that from 
from being there, it's shifted to there. And it does so every, uh, well, it does it continuously, but that's about the size of the gap for t over 2,000 years. And in fact, even in, in Abraham's time, it was also different. And I'll, I'll have a look at that a little bit later. Uh, so, I, I, when I looked at this, I said, but the sun with a Passover must be in Aries, not in Pisces. Um, and how do we get that? The only way you can get that is if you try and keep your Passover when the sun is in Aries. As opposed to trying to keep your Passover when the sun is at the equinox. Now, in the year that Jesus was born, they coincided. And this is why the Hebrew calendar in that year, in the, in, in, you'll remember I said to you, I believe that, let me just go there quickly. Um, you'll believe in, uh, uh, do I have it open? Um, I don't know which one I had. Yeah. You, you remember I said to you, I believe that in this year where we know that Ju Jesus was born on the 17th of June, and it worked out to the 15th of the third month, and I said to you, I believe that this was correctly lined up because the rule that they use coincided with what I believe is the correct rule. And this is what I'm saying. The correct, they, they apply the rule, they're looking for a Passover as close as possible to, to the equinox. And in that instance, the, the, the beginning of the year, the first month of the year, based on, on that rule, in this year of 2 BC, would have, coinc would have been correct. It would have fallen in, in uh, the po uh, it, it would have matched because the two rules apply. Trying to keep Passover when the sun is in Aries, when the, sun, when the equinox is already in Aries, both rules are actually aiming at the same target. So let me put it to you this way. I believe the correct target is to keep, is to look for the Passover uh, must occur when the sun is in Aries. That will be the correct month. So or, or let, me put you, when, or the f let me rephrase it. We know the Passover is the f full moon. You must have a situation where the full moon, okay, the, month, the full moon of that particular first month must happen when the sun is in Aries. Not necessarily when the sun is at the, at the, um, equ uh, at the equinox. But in Jesus' year, they happen to be the same target. In other words, bo both targets, the, the, true t the, the incorrect target w well coincided with the correct target. So if you're aiming at the incorrect target and it coincides with the correct target, well, you, guess what? You're going to hit the correct target, <laughs> if that makes sense to you. Um, and I, that's why I believe that in this instance, when we looked at t understanding when that Jesus' birth w on the 17th of June coincided with the, uh, the, the, with the 15th day um, of the third month, um, June 17th, because th of their rules that they apply coincided with a true, the, actu the, the actual target, there's no I have no issue that this, is, uh, this, this does in this year, for this year only, or uh, in these years around about, I mean, uh, over the 2,000 years, it got worse and worse and worse. But at this time, the Hebrew calendar does line up correctly with, uh, with the uh, b correct beginning. So their first, uh, first month is correct in this particular year because the rules they use coincided with what I believe to be the correct rules. So I'm going to try. Uh, this is a, this, I'm going to try and put this in a different way, and, and, and I know this is a concept that might be a little bit um, abstract to, to, to grasp. So what I, I've tried to do is put a present uh, to present it in a different way. When when our when our parents told us when our, uh, our parents told us that when you see a, when you see a clock, and um, and you see the, the little hand and the big hand pointing at the 12, then you know that it's midday or it's midnight. Okay, so let's just say it's, it's midnight and it's the beginning of a new day. So when we saw the little hand and the big hand both pointing to the 12, we knew that's the beginning of the day. So that's the picture that we learned to understand the beginning of the day. Okay, and um, but if 
if I had to, for some other reason, if the, if the clock had to be, so let's say, we, we know the hanging point on this clock is, is, is probably there, right? So when we hang it up on the wall, it hangs up there. But if I had to hang this clock up on, on the wall so that it hung like that, okay? So it's hanging on the wall like that. So the hanging point is now, the hanging point behind the clock, okay, is here now, and the clock is hanging skew. Okay. Now my question to you is, do you do we now consider this to be the beginning of the day, be or or do we still consider this to be the beginning of the day or midday, whatever you want to call it? Okay. And I I put it to you. It doesn't matter why, how the clock is hanging. You can hang this clock up any way you like. We know when we see this picture, okay, when we see that picture, we know it's the beginning of the day. It doesn't matter where your hanging point is. We can't see the hanging point, but when we look at this clock, even when it's hanging skew, we know, hang on, that's the beginning of the day. All right, from a Gregorian perspective. Okay, I'm not talking about from a Hebrew perspective. Obviously, a Hebrew perspective doesn't look at 12 o'clock at night. But I'm just trying to demonstrate. We know what the picture looks like for the beginning. And this is where the guys at. Um, I'm just going to take it back to to to. Let me revert. This is why I think that the guys at World Last Chance and the Hebrew calendar guys get it wrong. Because they are saying, okay, that even though, even they're saying, even though the, the, the okay, the hanging point here is represents the, um, the equinox. Okay, the point at which this clock is hung is the equinox, which you can't see with the naked eye. You can measure it. But you can't see the naked. You can't see the equinox with a naked eye. Okay. Uh, you can't look up and say, "Ah, I see the the equinox." It's got. It's something that has to be measured. It can be measured. It was measured at that time, and I have no doubt that they knew exactly where the equinox was. But I don't believe that that was what the picture they looked for in the sky to determine the beginning of the year. Because what? So what? What? What, what the guys at Hebrew, uh, Hebrew calendar and, and World's Last Chance are saying is that. When you've got this situation, you, you know, with the clock is hanging skew now. It's moved over the 2,000 years. Okay. The hanging point, the hanging point has changed. The, the equinox has moved. Uh, but you must still, you, this is now the beginning of the day or the beginning of the year. You, you, and, uh, and that's wrong. The, the picture is wrong because that picture doesn't look like what God told us. What my, fi my, my dad told me that when it's pointing to the 12, it's the beginning of the day. Now you're trying to tell me, no, 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 when it's, when it's pointing upwards, when it's still pointing at the hanging point, then that's the beginning of the day. And that's, is, that's so I'm just trying to give an analogy of the difference between what they're saying and what I believe is the truth. So... Um, and I'm, I hope I haven't lost anybody. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go to another slide where, I've, where I'm gonna now put it in context of, of the, um, of the of of the picture. Um, I'll just go to the next slide here. Oops, not that one. Okay. So what I've tried to do is, if we take away the numbers and we now put our our constellations in it. Okay. We've now got a clock where we our, our constellations and. We've still got our, 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 our short hand is the sun, which uh, and, and our long hand is the moon. Okay, and uh, what happens now is at the hanging point is still we still got a hanging point on this clock, and the hanging point at this moment is such that the hanging point is between uh, Pisces and and um, and Aquarius. Now I'll just show you on on Stellarium. So let's go to 2020 again. Okay, and we look there, there you see it's, it's um, okay, so it's, well, maybe it's more in Pisces than, 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 than Aries, okay. Um, let's just go to, uh, I think if we go 2000, uh, 
Lawrence is trying to simulate um, that position. So what we're seeing here is that um, uh, let's Okay, I'm just going to go another uh, uh, 200 years. I just want to see, uh, so that you, uh, just to demonstrate, just to emphasize it a little bit. Um, uh, 200 years is not enough. Okay, the p let me do it this way. Okay, we got 2,000. We can see it's there. Okay, the I the equinox. If we go to zero, which is closer to Jesus' birth. Okay, we see it's moved from there to, it's moved by uh, 30 degrees. Okay, if we go to uh, negative two, 2,000, in other words, two th when Abraham w w was looking at the sky, he saw the equinox there, remember, it was, th it was up here in Pisces, then there, and now it's here in Taurus. So it, it has these jumps of about 30 degrees every 2,000 years. Okay, so that's what I'm just trying to to demonstrate. The hanging point is changing over time. Okay, so if, if we go to, we've got a situation where the hanging point is such that um, maybe we got maybe the hanging point is probably more like resulting in this situation okay um, it's more towards Pisces and and what world last chance and Hebrew are saying this is when the when the moon uh, when the when, when the Sun and the moon are in at the hanging point which happens to coincide with Pisces at the moment that's the beginning of the year okay and um, but in Jesus' day, the it it looked different. It in Jesus' day, it was we know that it was more like like that. The hanging point was in a different place. Okay, and and the and the equinox was more in line with Aries, and when and in his first month when the sun and the moon were uh, together and the equinox happened to coincide with Pisces you can see it's a very different picture so that was what the beginning of the year looked like uh, in Jesus year so to speak but this is what the beginning of the year looks like now and the picture looks quite different and I'm saying it shouldn't look different I believe God gave us a clock that we could look at we didn't have to try and figure out where is the hanging point to understand when when wh which month because now we I mean we have we have a t we have months where this is still the situation okay and we'll just sort of say no 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 that's not the beginning of the month it's actually a month earlier it's this is the beginning of the of the Sorry, the, so you, we have some months that look like that, but that's not apparently the beginning of the year month. This is apparently, according to them, the beginning of the year month because they're looking to the hanging point, which you can't see. You've got to measure it. And I believe our Father didn't create our clock in the sky to be like that. We should be able to look up. We can see the position of, of the sun and the moon. We can see the position of the stars, and we should be able to immediately recognize the the not only the beginning of the year or the the, the first month in the year, but any month for that matter. When we when we look at these hands, and we know that they are, uh, we, the, the 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 sun and the moon are in conjunction um, when the when the sun is in uh, 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 Gemini, we should know that that is the third month. And when we see this situation, we should know that it is the six months, one, two, three, four, five, six months, etc. So we should be able to read a clock in the skies just like we read a clock without having to worry about 
where is the equinox? I'm not saying the equinox is, was never measured, it was measured, but it was not, I don't believe it was considered to be the de determining factor as to when a year should start. Okay, so I've tried to create it pictorially um, in terms of the sun, moon, and stars. And I'm going to take you to one more slide. And <laughs> I hope I haven't lost you guys completely uh, in terms of what I'm trying to demonstrate. But hopefully this will, for those that are lost, this might help. Okay, the green clocks are the rules that I believe we should apply. Okay, and the orange clock is the rules that I believe are incorrect, that the Hebrew calendar guys and the world's last chance guys currently apply. So they, this is the picture that we have at the moment in our skies. When they say it's the beginning of the year, that's the picture we have. Okay, we've got the sun and the moon um, pointing at the equinox, which happens to coincide with the Pisces. Okay, um, and according to their rules, this is what Jesus's year looked like. Okay, well we. we they they saying the picture looks different look different, and we are, must just accept that. Uh, we must still look at the hidden point behind the clock, and and that was what the picture looked like in Jesus's year. Okay, so that's the rules they're currently applying. I believe that's wrong. I believe that this is this is what the picture looks like now in our time. For what the correct first month looks like when the sun and the moon are in cause uh, are such that the the sun is in Aries and in Jesus year it looked like this yes it was slightly tilted but the picture still remains the same it's the same picture okay even though the hooking the the, pla the point at which you hang this clock is changed the picture remains the same this picture is not the same as this picture. Okay. This picture is the same as this picture. It comes down to the same thing as our original clock. Um, the clock that we, we were told when that, uh, we were told when we see that picture, it's the start of the day. Even If the clock is hanging straight, that picture is the start of the day. And that's why, this is very important to, to understand, that's why I believe the rule should be to look for the conjunction of the sun and the moon such that when it's Passover, the sun is in Aries not at a hidden point. And when you do this, and you apply these rules consistently, the month always starts a month later than to what these guys, approximately a month later. I believe they, they've been a month too early consistently for a very long time. And this year included. We've shown that this year they were a month too early, and, we, and it's because they are not, they're applying these rules and not these rules. And when you apply these rules consistently, even if you go back to the year 2000, even if you go back to Abraham's time, um, you will have this picture. And this is what, what I want to actually just touch on very briefly. If we think about two times of the year, that, well, let's, let's talk about Moses' time. We know that in the scriptures, God said to him in Exodus uh, 19, he said to him, this is your, I think, uh, uh, let's just go there quickly. Because I just want to get, that's, uh, it's, uh, Exodus 19. Um, Uh, 
sorry, it wasn't 19. Okay, so sorry, it's it's, it's not uh, Exodus 19. It was. Sorry, it was Exodus 12. 19 is when they actually, uh, is the story of when they departed. But Exodus 12, the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, and, and he said, and, and saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation and of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month I shall take to them Every, uh, to, to every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers a lamb for a house so here we have a situation God says Moses you see this uh, you see this new moon this is your this is your f your first new moon this is your the beginning of your year and that's it nothing nothing else we just told you just that's all we told. He, he was shown. He was shown that this is the beginning of your year. This full moon is the beginning of. Your year. We don't know what it was. That what picture was he seeing? What, 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 what was what was the defining factor in what made this particular moon peculiar? Uh, how do we know in the future that this particular full moon must be the one that we start the year in? And uh, I just want to put to you that if you read the rest of the chapter. Um, if you read the rest of chapter 12, this is all about selecting the lamb, the, 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 the victim, okay, the sacrificial lamb, and it's called the victim, the definition of the word. Okay, so they select for themselves a sacrifice, and it's all about the, the, the lamb, the sacrificial lamb, and it's all about the sacrificial lamb. Right throughout, it's all about the, the sacrificial lamb. And I just want to suggest to you that I believe that what Moses, look, when he looked up in the sky, he knew that the sun was in Aries, which is pointing to the Lamb. Okay. I believe he was in the sky, he was looking at Aries, which speaks. And we know that in Jesus, when Jesus was crucified, we know that, that is the sun was in Aries. There's no doubt about that. We can see that from Stellarium. Okay. We showed that earlier. Um, on 2 BC. Passover, the sun was in Aries. And I believe that when God looked, when Moses looked up, he, he knew that the sun was in Aries, that this sun and this moon conjunction, which marked the beginning of the first month of the year, was when the sun was in Aries. I believe that's the picture he was looking at. Okay, it just makes sense to me because all the rest of the verse was all about the the sacrificial lamb which is what Aries is all about Aries is speaking to uh, speaking about the, the the sacrificial lamb and then I want to also suggest to you there's another story the story of when Abraham was told to go and sacrifice his son uh, on the altar we're not told when that happened um, which time of the year there's, as far as I'm aware there's no evidence as to when it happened but I want to, we know that that whole story was a type and shadow of Jesus, of, of God sacrificing his own son for us at, at, the, at the Passover 2,000 years later. And I want to put to you that that event, when God told Abraham to go and sacrifice your son on the altar to test him, I believe that happened when the sun and the moon were in conjunction in Aries the beginning of the year which happened to be the beginning of the year when Jesus was crucified and it should be the beginning of the year for us also even though the equinox has shifted over these last 4,000 years so that's what I believe we should be using to determine the true beginning of the year so the rules of trying to keep Passover close to the equinox, I believe, are inappropriate and out of line. And I believe we should be using a different set of rules. Um, and we should be looking to keep Passover when the sun and the moon conjunction is in Aries. And that's and when I apply these rules, 
um, you will see that the year starts in April almost continuously. Every, even, even the adjustments, and I'm going to run through that with you guys a little bit. I'm going to go through to 2000 and just jump through a couple of years so that you can see um, how the beginning of the year stays in April on this particular version. There's one or two exception years where it jumps to as early. I think the earliest it ever goes to is the 30th of March. But all the other years stay in April. Stay in April. Stay in April. Okay. So uh, if we go to the year 2000, and remember that everything is calculated on the spreadsheet. Okay. Everything is calculated. So the grayed out area is, 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 is previous year. And it calculates the correct new position uh, for the beginning of the year, for the year that I entered over there. Everything is nothing that has been pre-entered in, pre whether it's new moons, whether it's apogees, whether it's the position of the sun and the moon. Every instance is calculated for every single date. So every single day it's calculated afresh, and we determine afresh where the conjunction happens. So we're looking for a conjunction between the sun and uh, where the sun is, that location in relation to the moon, okay, that uh, and that, those two there. And I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing mathematically is I'm looking to see that they fit in those, uh, in we know that the areas, uh, I've, I've, I've discovered that these two positions, uh, when it's 8 degrees and 37.5 degrees, that's, that's about 30 degrees, that's, that's where, where the sun and the moon must be in conjunction between those two positions, and then it results in the Passover landing as close as possible to when the sun is in, in, in Aries, as opposed to my other uh, spreadsheet, which is the Hebrew, yeah, we've got solstice start, and then we've got a different you can see the positions there. Yeah, it's looking for a sun-moon conjunction between three, eight, 348 and, and 26 degrees. And that's related to keeping, you know, the solstice, uh, keeping the years, uh, the Passover as close as possible to the equinox. Okay. I, 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 I typed in here solstice, but I should actually, I just realized that that should be, um, uh, that should be equinox start, and, and I just labeled it. <laughs> so it's still a work in progress. Okay, so that's that, that's a different. So the, the 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 target you can see the target area is different now to to what um, let me just say that um, is, is different to to our calendar. The target is different. Okay, there's our target. There's the beginning and end of the target. So that's the only difference between these two. Uh, s uh, between these two spreadsheets, there's no other difference. All the other calculations are 100% identical, just the target has been moved. That's the only thing I've done. And I've changed the color of the band. Uh, it's just to help me to, to distinguish which calendar I'm in, because other than that, they are identical. And, and I'm going to flip through the, the year. So year 2000, we see here, the year 2000, the beginning was 5 April. And uh, I've got, it was a, this was a long year. Okay, so it was a 384-day year. And um, and it ended in 23 April, and then the next year started on the 24th of April. Okay, so you can see. So if I go and change it to the next year, 2001, now it should be a, th a short year. You see, it's a short year. So we had a long year last. Now it's a short year. Uh, you see, the 24th of April is now, now. So that's correct. We're starting on 24th of April, and it ends on 20 12th of April. And the next year will start on the 13th of April, and it's a short year. Okay, and you'll see that. Okay, uh, we're not looking at the equinox in this instance is right up there, and it's Passover in on this calendar will always by definition. Uh, I'm not looking to s make sure. Pass well, I am looking to make sure Passover is after after the equinox, but because my target is way after the equinox, there is no way that I can have a Passover before the equinox situation. So. That rule will, uh, will still be met uh, by far. Okay, so if we go to the next year, okay, so this is another short year. Now this is a 
um, uh, one of those f funny type situations where it's rounding off, you see it, the, that extra day I said it was 354 or 355 days uh, for a short year, or 383 uh, and 384 days for a long year. That happens. So you'll see now the start has moved to the 13th April, and the next year, um, this is now, th this you'll see, this is an early start to the year so we're now moving to earlier in the year and this is the earliest it gets in our calendar um, so if I go 2003 that 3rd of April jumps and it'll now be a long year because we need to start uh, let me just enter that okay see 3 April has moved that's the beginning of the year now and you see it's a long year okay there's an instance of our 383 and it's a long year, and so now we, uh, we're shifting the, the next year start point later in the year again. So it, it's now, so it's going from early April to late April, and then the, n and the year after that it'll move 10 days earlier, and, and then 10 days earlier, and then it jumps again to towards the end of April. And then it moves to the middle of April, and then to the beginning of April, and it jumps to the end of April, and then to the middle of April, and to the beginning of April. So you've got two short years and a long year, two short years and a long year, two short years and a long year, consistently throughout. And I am not determining when that happens. That is absolutely determined by this position of the sun and the moon and the stars, or the sun and the moon in relation to the stars, the Aries constellation. Okay, so we've got a perfect situation where we are using the sun and the moon and the stars for our calendar. In this calendar, they're, not, they're using the sun and the moon. That's it. Because the equinox has got nothing to do with the stars. The position of this equinox has got nothing to do with the position of the stars. So where's the sun and the moon and the stars in determining this calendar? It's not, it's, it, it uses the sun and the moon only. The sun and the moon in terms of the equinox which is determined by the sun only so the picture of the stars is never in this picture and that, that's another reason why I believe that, that this calendar is wrong our calendar uses the sun the moon to determine they must be in the correct constellation the sun and the moon and the stars just as God determined it in Genesis he said the sun and the moon and the stars are there for us to determine our days and our appointed times and now I just want to just cover this because I, I meant to cover it earlier why is it so important uh, that we get the calendar right. Uh, are we just doing this for fun? Well, it is a tremendous amount of fun, but besides that, I believe it is absolutely important to, to, to worship on the correct Sabbaths for a start. So God's Sabbaths, Yahuwah's Sabbaths. He's given us His Sabbaths. It's not up to us to decide when the Sabbaths are. We must fall in line with His timing, not the other way around. And when we've got calendars that don't follow his clock, and he's given us his timing, he's given us his timing, he said, I'm giving you my timing in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And you must follow my timing in terms of when your Sabbaths are, and when your feast days are, and when, and when your years are, and when your years start and end. And when we, as we are doing now, even though, we, even though this whole thing is based on the calculation, we are following the rules that, that we're following his... The, the position of the sun and moon and stars in relate, the sun and the moon in relation to the stars according to what he told us to do. And I don't say I have a problem with calculating. Yes, I must just uh, uh, say to this, and I say to any calendar, must be verified against the real clock, the one that's up in the sky above our heads. We need to look up and verify the first day of the month. We should be able to see the, um, well, the, the first day of the month is a bit more difficult, but we know when the, con when the conjunction happened. And we know that the first sliver will happen on the first day of the working week. The f this first, first day of the working week, sorry, that's Newman Day. This first day of the working week, we should see the first sliver, the first crescent. And we, should, we can verify it for ourselves. When we go up and look in the sky, we say, is our calendar correct? Was the 4th of April 2000, okay, we're in 2003 now, but in any particular year that we're up, we should we could say, okay, my calendar says it's this. But is it, practic is it actually physically in the sky? Is it like that? And we should be able to verify it. And that's our final confirmation. But we like to know what's coming ahead. And we like to put up a calendar ahead of time. And I have no problem with calculating a calculator years in ahead. Because we know that the position of the sun and the moon and the stars are perfectly calculatable. 
We can calculate. That's what Selerium does. It's calculating these positions thousands of years before and thousands of years after because we know what the what the the, the formulas are. We've been able to determine the correct way. To, we've been able to determine how to calculate the exact position for any particular day, regardless of where we are in in in. in, in and so there's no problem with calculating the calendar forward, but you need when we do that, we need to calculate the calendar forward and backwards based on the correct rules. And when you apply the incorrect rules, that's when things start going haywire. So I believe that this is, uh, this is the set of rules that we should be using. I'm not saying this is absolutely correct. This is not a thus at the moment. I, I'm just seeking the truth, like everybody else, like Nick von Alain, like uh, Mikhail Shabbat, um, Shabbat uh, 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 like the guys at Will, uh, uh, World's Last Chance and, and the guys at Creator's cal um, uh, Creation Calendar, and all the, everybody that's trying to put the calendar together, everybody that we're just everybody's trying to seek the truth. I don't believe there's anybody that's trying to to to, to deceive anybody. Uh, we're all trying to understand the truth, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do now. And through the work that we've that we've gone through with Alan, and discovering that that there's an error in this particular year, uh, I've had to go and ask myself the question: Well, why? Well, why is it an error? And is, is this error consistent? Has this error been consistent? And and how do we remain how do we make sure that our calendar, if, we had to, if I had to calculate backwards to 2000, and unfortunately I'm limited in this Excel spreadsheet, I can't go back beyond 1900 because Excel can't handle dates uh, earlier than 1900. It's a limitation of Excel that uh, there, is, there are ways to overcome it, but it's, it's quite a, a cumbersome thing to, to do. I might actually, if we have time, and, and I do believe we'll have time, I'm not going to mention that in this video. I'm going to put another video later together where I show that this calendar actually lines up more correctly with the time that we're in than, than the other calendars. And, and I'm, uh, I've already spent enough time on this. I just want this, uh, this was mainly, and there's one last thing I just want to conclude on before I go any further on, on these calendars. So in, to wrap up, I have no problem with the calculator calendar as long as we apply the correct rules. Okay. All right, so what, what, what I'm doing is from this calculation is I'm just presenting it in a more uh, presentable format, and that's what this is all about. So you guys are mainly familiar with this, and all the calculations are done there, and I'm just bringing it through and presenting it in, in, a, in, a, in a way that's easier to, to understand and read. Okay, that's, um, and that's, what, I, that's what, it's, what I'm really trying to do here. Um, so... Um, Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go back to I I I linked. Uh, I, I just want to make that a 2020 again, and so that the two are matched up to each other. Okay. So this is our calendar for this year, and um, and based on that, uh, we are now on July the 26th on on this calendar. Uh, July 26. And um, I believe that the uh, true 9th of Av is on the 28th of August. And I believe that God's following this. And I want to show you, uh, I, I started marking up this, this calendar here, but um, I've actually, um, I, I've moved my markings to another calendar, and I, I, I've brought Ezekiel into the, uh, sorry, not Eze um, yeah, Ezekiel into the picture and 2 Kings 25 into the picture with the understanding that we are in fact today on the sixth day of the fourth month on God's true calendar um, and that we're not on um, We're not on the 11th day of the 5th, uh, sorry, July 26th. Uh, let me just see if this thing, uh, I've got it, sorry. I'll, oh, I've delinked those, uh, those dates. I just want to put on 2020. Okay, let's get it up to 2020. Okay. Uh, so we're 2020 and July 26th. There. So 
we are not on the sixth day of the fifth month as the Hebrew calendar would say um, I believe we're a month earlier sorry uh, yeah a month earlier they, they started too early and we are actually on the sixth day of the fourth month we are still in the fourth month we're not in the fifth month yet and that has a whole lot of implications on our understanding with regards to what's going to happen over the next time period and I'm going to get into that later okay there's one last thing that I just want to um, get into and that's the um, the issue of the blood moons and this is where Alan I, I, uh, I'm sorry I've taken so long to get to this point <laughs> you're probably uh, wondering if I'm ever going to get to this when I when I started looking, comparing the two calendars, and, and it came to mind uh, even before, uh, actually before Alan um, uh, uh, mentioned in his last video about the blood moons lining up on the Hebrew calendar and therefore reverting back to the Hebrew calendar, um, I'd already um, d picked up that there was an issue with our calendar, this calendar that we're using now. Um, in that the blood moons don't line up um, let me just link back I just want to link back to this thing so I can make changes on this side without having to um, so that I can say uh, equals Okay, so now I can now I can make changes to the date here without having to flip between this, uh, the the sheets. Okay, so this is 2014, and you'll see on 2014 on our calendar the the, the blood moon lines up uh, with with the tabernacles and unleavened bread. But on the 2015 year, that was the other half of the tetrad. Uh, let me, I should just show you, uh, you'll see that they don't line up. Okay, this is 2015, and you'll see there's the blood moon there. So it doesn't line up. And the other one is not here because on, on, our, on this calendar, what I believe to be the true calendar, 2014 is a long year. Okay, let me just show you. So 2014 is a long year. So the, the other blood moon which f fell actually on our calendar in the 13th month, on the Hebrew calendar, of course, it's different. So let me go to the Hebrew calendar and show you there. So we've got a problem. Okay, let me just uh, conclude here. We, our calendar's got a problem. On the one year, 2014, we line up. Okay, we line up on the blood moons for the feast days. But in 2015, they don't line up. So I, I thought, oh, hang on, there's a problem here. This could be a potential problem. What's going on here? Okay, that was a great disappointment to say the least. So 2015, there's the blood moon there, and the other one was in the 13th month of the previous year, so they don't line up on our calendar. But in the, we go to the Hebrew calendar just to show you that my calculations still work. Okay, again, I just want to link this to the other sheet. Uh, that equals that. Okay, now I can change this one also. Right, so if I go to 2014 here, uh, 2014. And 2014, the blood moon lines up, and tabernacles also lines up. Okay, uh, there is a slight difference in the in the in the days here. Okay. Um, and that's to do with when the actual blood moon occurred in the, t in the hour of the day. So it actually probably occurred after sunset. So although it was flagged as the 18th, 8th of October, it's, it was after sunset. So it actually from a Hebrew kind of perspective, it actually occurred on, the, on Tabernacles because Tabernacles actually started on the evening of the, of the 8th of October. Okay, so just to explain that slight difference there. Um, and then if we go on the Hebrew calendar to 2015, uh, um, just to show you that the blood moons there on their calendar 
also line up. Okay, there's the blood moon on 2015, <coughs> and the tabernacles, it lines up. So that's great. That kind of confirms the calendar, and that's why uh, the other lady that Alan was talking about is reverted to the, or believes that the Hebrew calendar is correct. And, um, and Alan says, well, maybe we must go back to that. Okay, so I understand the logic, but I just want to point something out to you guys. Okay, if we go, the next tetrad we know is in 2032-33. Okay. So if we go to 2032, and you've seen my calculations are, are correct, okay, so I can calculate any year going forward. And if I go to 2032, you'll see here, in on the Hebrew calendar, all of a sudden, the blood moon in 2032 doesn't occur. Now, they've got a problem, okay? There, it's in the wrong month, okay? But 2033... Okay. Um, again, we've got that day situation, uh, the the cutoff point. Okay, so it probably it's just showing there on that day, but it's 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 a it comes to the timing. Of, it's a timing issue. Okay, but it's still in the in the, in the right ballpark there, and so is this one. Okay, so the, in in t in the next tetrad, the Hebrew calendar has got a problem. One year lines up, and the other year doesn't. The 2020, 2032 doesn't line up, but 2033 does. But on on our calendar, or what I call our calendar, or Yahuwah's calendar, or Yah's calendar, whatever you want to call it, okay, the, if we go to 2032, okay, it's 2032, and the blood moons line up, okay, and 2033, It's 2033. See, it's 2033. And okay, this is again one of those day issues, but it's in that in that re in that correct ballpark. And the same thing, yeah. So we've got a situation here that um, Yahoo's calendar, or our, our revised calendar, lines up perfectly with the tetrad in 2032, but doesn't line up in 2014-15. Uh, At the Hebrew calendar, it's the other way around. So now, which one is the correct calendar? And I I, I cannot tell you what the answer is. Uh, this is something that each one of us has to decide. Uh, there's something going on here. There's something happening. Um, and so for some other reason, uh, God was confirming their calendar, but later on he's confirming this. Um, it's the only thing I can think of. I don't know. It's just something to bear in mind. Um, and that's why I said to Alan, let's not be too hasty about throwing out this calendar, which, uh, which marks the beginning of the year one month later than the Hebrew calendar. Let's not throw it out completely there might still be something in it because we do line up with the blood moons um, going forward. And the Hebrew calendar no longer lines up with the blood moons. So God is trying to tell us something, I believe. He's trying to show us something. There's perhaps a shift. He's no longer going to regard their calendar as correct, but perhaps. I don't know. Maybe he's never regarded as correct. I don't know why the blood moons landed on their feasts and they don't on ours on this, on this and then the other way around. Um, but there is something in this thing. And uh, I think we will soon see whether I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to have some confirmations happening in the next couple of weeks or next week or two um, to confirm whether we are correct in determining that we that the um, that this year and in fact all years um, is uh, one month later than the Hebrew calendar. So the stuff in Ezekiel 1, you can go read it for yourself, um, that refers to the, the first day of the fourth month. And there's stuff in Ezekiel uh, 3.16 that refers to the, well, if you count the number of days, it, it's actually pointing to the 12th day of the fourth month. And there's stuff in uh, Ezekiel that's pointing to um, this area here. But on the Hebrew calendar, the fourth month's already passed. The events of Ezekiel 1 cannot happen anymore because they already on the fifth month. They already are uh, fifth of uh, the, so they, they're one month ahead. So I think that we might still see, if we see the things that are, that are described in Ezekiel 1, and, and I'll go into that, I'll do another video on, on, on this calendar and how, they, how it lines up to some of the scriptures um, in, a, in another video.
Okay. I think I'm done with regards to, and I've got one last, no, I'm going to leave the issue that, uh, that, uh, that, I, that I said in the beginning of the video that I was going to discuss with regards to the alignment. I will leave for the next video um, in that, uh, that concerning um, some recent work that was put out by some of our, our, our brothers. So I think I've, I've achieved my goal. I've been able to explain to you the progression of the calendars, why I believe that uh, the, the correct rule or what the correct rule is and why I believe it's the, uh, the correct is to make sure the Passover happens when the sun is in Aries. Um, and uh, there's, all, you know, and, and I've explained the position with regards to the blood moons and all that. So I think there's enough information for each one, each every person to be able to go and decide for themselves whether they believe or what, it, what, which calendar they want to accept, which calendar they're going to accept, and which one they're going to reject, and which one w what they're going to believe. This is a personal decision. It's kind of like the globe versus flat Earth situation. The only difference is um, this is going to have an impact on your understanding of the scriptures. Um, and that's why it's so important, I believe. And the other thing, of course, is each one of us is accountable personally for the day that we worship the Lord. And I know it's not a, this is not a salvation issue. Let me, don't, let me not get that wrong. The day that we worship is not, if we're worshiping on the wrong day, it's, uh, Paul, as Paul said, don't let anybody um, you know, um, condemn us for worshiping on this day or that day. So I'm, I'm not saying that it's a salvation issue. This is a love issue. To, to try and find the correct day that we should be worshipping on is, is a love issue. And even if we get it wrong, I believe that God honors it. So in this week, I believe that we should be worshipping on Tuesday. Now I know that in this, practical, in this world that we live in, it's not practical. Some people working on this day and it's not possible to honor this day as a Sabbath day. But if we are... And, and we believe that it is, that at least we should be acknowledging that that is the Sabbath, or if we believe this to be the case. If you believe it's a Saturday or a Sunday, well, then that's fine. That's you, you will, each person will be answerable at the end of the day. But I believe it's a love issue, and if we believe that this, that we are supposed to follow, that the moon marks the Sabbaths, that uh, when the moon is in the, f uh, when the moon is at half, a full, and and uh, well, first qu first quarter, full moon, three quarter, and the last sliver of the Sabbath, and the moon determines when our, our Sabbath would be, then we should be worshipping according to those days and not necessarily when the Gregorian says it's a worship day. Or the Hebrew, or when the Hebrew calendar says it's a worship day. We should be looking what God's calendar says is the worship day. And with that, I'm going to, to sign off. I hope this helps.